Welcome again to Selectors. Um, and this week we on Selectors, we have our brother, Mr. John Blood of John Blood and the Highlies with us. What up, John? What's up, people? What's up? Good to be here. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're good, man. You're good. Good. So we've been having, nice. um, nice. We've been having some good conversations uh, over the last couple of weeks with, with some musicians and some people that we played with. And man, we've known you okay. for such a long time, you know, and, and yeah, yeah. listening to how we both growing together and how the music flowing, it's just a, a, a wonderful thing yeah. to, to get a chance to touch back in and, and chat with you a little bit about what you have coming up, what you have going on and the music, you know, and what, what your favorite yeah. album is, one of your favorite albums. Yeah, man. Um, so, All so right. yeah. Album, and you can be out, right? It's called 2020 Vision. Yeah, that's right. Tell, tell us about where that come from. Yeah, that's right. Well, um, you know, lockdown hit all of us really hard, and for that first month or so, I was just kind of getting to grips with it. But after a month, I had a song about what the lockdown was, who was following the rules, what the government was doing, what they weren't doing, you know, how the people were responding to the NHS. But as that whole scenario unfolded and that song came about, I started writing other songs um, based upon the other things that were happening. So like George Floyd mm. and then the dude who got shot jogging, the other dude who got um, told he would, that, you know, by the woman, she's going to call the police on him because he asked her to put her dog on a lead. All those things were happening and the songs, like, you know, other things like Kim Jong Kim Jong Un just disappeared from the face of the earth. No one's seen this dude forever. You know, what I mean, we don't even know if he's alive. Mm. And um, all these kinds of things were playing off in the world, and they just kept. I was kept getting all this news all the time, and of course, I'm at home like everyone else. But I'm not much of a TV watcher, but I do watch the news. So I'm flicking between BBC and CNN and Al Jazeera. And then going online to watch NBC and, you know, check out the news in Africa and on Latin America and so on. And it's just craziness happening in the world at the same time. So all those songs, after, after the song that's called Lockdown, all the other songs just kind of fell into place because I, I was just, I was feeling the narrative of what was going on in the world at the time. So I just felt like I had to get it out because I'm not the best even though it might not sound like this right now, I'm not the best speaker. <laughs> you, know, <so. laughs> you know, so I tend to I tend to need to get these things out in song, or else they don't, you know, they just stay bottled up there, and I don't know how to process what I'm feeling or seeing in the world. So um, that's where these songs came from. And um, yeah, it, it didn't take me too long in the end. It was just kind of, you know, lyrics come, make the beats, or the beat came first to do the lyrics, and yeah, just put it out there. So, John, are you one, one side first? So, John, are you producing all of them by yourself, or you do not all at home? Yeah, yeah, I've got a setup at home. I I play more or less everything. If you look behind me, you can see like a oh, drum set, and, a drum. and then I have guitars up here, and you know, my bass and my piano on that side. So, yeah, I've got everything here. You know, I use wow. like that. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys should come over for a jam, actually. It'll be nice. Oh, man, I would really love nice. to do that. I'd absolutely love to do that. Rick, what was your question? <laughs> Literally what you said. Literally what you said. I wanted to know if he made all the beats himself by himself because um, I know that John usually rolls with, like, a band and does the stuff live, but I'm pretty sure he's got the ability to write all this stuff, too. And I just didn't yeah. know if this was... All you because that track, um, the fourth one, Cloud Makes Another Planet. Cloud Make Another Planet. Oh, could I make right. another planet? The drums yeah. of that are insane. I was just like, this sounds like a completely different producer. It, like, so I wanted to know, did you make that one as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing about it is, okay, so the band actually kind of dissolved. Well, it didn't kind of dissolve. It dissolved in 2018, towards the end of 2018. So since then, I have not actually performed, but I've been writing a lot. And um, during that writing, I've just been listening to loads of music. I'm still friends with, like, the keyboard player, 
play any band, Rev. Rev is like my best mate. So there's a lot of musical exchange between the two of us. And because he's Ghanaian, whenever I'm with him, which is quite a lot of the time, I'm listening to Afrobeats. Mm. Like... Mm. 24-7, you know, so much so that I could sing some of those songs in Pigeon English. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> but um, it, it started to influence me more. And it's not like I didn't know Afrobeat before, because I listened to a lot of fella from like my early 20s till now. But mm. it, because it's kind of fresh now and it's in everybody's consciousness, I was like, well... You know, just do the same lyrics with different beats, you know, nothing's wrong with that. Just try something and see how it goes, you know. So yeah man. I really, really liked it. I really like that song. It's got a really cool happy vibe. And it's like world music meets EDM. Yeah, world EDM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all yeah. it's all you, totally. Cause I'm listening to it. Yeah, man. Cause I'm listening to it as usual, you know. You can't hear it, but I can. <laughs> Every time, man. <laughs> Every time. Charles, Charles does this thing when he's when he's listening to the music. Why are we talking about it? Right, <laughs> right. Oh wow, that's a this this a real deep setup, boy. I had to say, I had to say, I like this setup. So listen, so 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 reset, right? Like reset yeah. is for me, man. You channeling last like lane, like straight up and down, yo. And, and uh, it, it, it's a big problem, like, you know, <laughs> it, 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 And it's still you, right? But but it but but the rhythm of the words and the and the, the vibe of it just feels like you know seventies resistance poetry from from behind the bridge, you know, and or or, yeah, or Independence yeah. Square. It feels like like you're on you're on Independence Square. Independence Square is downtown Trinidad. Uh, for those of you all who don't know, downtown Port of Spain. Um, and it feels like you're just, you're shouting out to the world. It, 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 one reminded me of home. Two, you know who it reminded me of the most? It reminded me of um, Malik. The bad poet Malik, Abdul Malik. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So all yeah, of those yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, dub poets from, from like Muta Baruka to, <laughs> yeah. to Abdul Malik to... Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, well, reset. I mean, I love rap so. I love. I can't get enough of rap so, but it's just not enough of it out there. So every time I do something, I try to do something with a rap so track in it or a rap so feel to, yeah. to it, you know. Because I think it's a wicked art form. I think it's a really, really good art form, um, and it brings out the best. I think for Trinidadian writers who trying to. Uh, do something that could transcend Trinidad. I think it's personally, I think it's probably one of our best vehicles to do so because it's uniquely Trinidadian, but the message gets across. You know what I'm saying? It's like the words are just as clear as when you listen to a hip hop song or a, mm. or a, or a dance or a song, probably even clearer than a dance or a song. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I always want to have. That rap so influenced in there because like Brother Resistance was massive for me growing up. You know, I still listen to the one album that I have of his like continuously because there's no other album like it. What's the name of the album? What's the name of the album, John? Um, I'll have to check it out on my computer, but I can't, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But um, we'll put it in the show notes too. We'll put it in the, in the um in the playlist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so like rap, so I think like before I had another song called Rise Up. Rise Up was that same kind of rap so vibe, but it was maybe a little mellower. This one's a little more direct, a little more punchier in the face, you know? Mm. Um, but like I say, it's because so much different things were happening that there was a lot to see and it had to be direct, it had to be quick. Yeah, it has to, you know, the message had to get across as soon as you got the words out. So, like, yeah, and rap, so I think is a great art form to do that, you know, to be direct and to still be musical. I, I really like there's a line in it where you say something that I've tried to say, but you say it really eloquently, which is something along the lines of 
yeah, all lives matter, but until Black Lives Matter, we wouldn't be talking about it, what's all the chatter, kind of thing. Yeah. You said it in one sentence in about eight words, and I was like, I've been trying to say this, so I have to memorize that to tell people <laughs> when they say all lives matter, because I'm like, that is the best response. I was like, that, that's exactly what you should say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's true, though. I mean, if all lives didn't matter, nobody would be on the streets protesting because everybody would be treated equally and fairly. So, you know, when they retort with that all lives matter crap, it's, it's just that crap, you know? We shouldn't even take notice of it, to be fair. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, yes, all lives matter. But right now, we're in an acute situation where... Mm. where oppressed people are dying because of the color of their skin. Like, yeah. and the poorest among us are dying because of the color of their skin. And, and that's an acute situation. When we solve that, yeah. we can come back and talk about something else after, you know what I mean? But, but, but it's like, For real. For it's, real. Like, it's like the head cut off and, and people bleeding everywhere, but you're going with like a plaster because you stub your toe. Like that, that's, that's, yeah, not, exactly. that's not useful. In the discourse right now, it's a much more acute situation. Carl, did you want to say something? No, 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 go on. Um, you're listening to the track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carl is busy. <laughs> Let me talk about survival. Survival. Yeah. So, tell us about survival. Well, there's a funny story attached to survival. Um. So I went to, I was born in England and went to Trinidad when I was like two. And every couple of years I'd come back to visit my mom for the summer, like for a month or something. And one month, one, one year, I think it was 1988, I came up in the, I remember I came up in the middle of the school term because I was having problem with my eyes and my mom wanted to get them checked out in England. So I came up and got them checked out. I think I had a small operation or something, or some small procedure. And then I just had like two weeks chilling out in England. And I would just go shopping with her wherever she was going. One day we went to Wood Green. Remember, this is 1988, right? Mm. And we passed the hour price. You all remember our price? I do. I do. Yeah? Yeah. Right. So our price was a music shop and a um, record shop. And I, I we passed this our price in with Green. And I asked if we could go in. Um, and she said, yeah. And, you know, by that time, I was massively into music. I was singing and stuff in church and whatever. And, you know, I was listening to everything on the radio. Um, so walking through the record shop, there's just records and cassettes. There's a special section with CDs. Remember, this is 1988. CDs weren't even really a thing yet, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, walking through, and I see a reggae section with cassette albums. And I'm looking through, I see names I know, like Shabba Ranks, I see Cutty Ranks, I see Bob Marley. And then I'm, there are quite a few Bob Marley ones, and I asked if I could have one or two. And she said, yes, but don't buy anything too expensive. <laughs> so I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. But there was survival. There was confrontation. There was legend. And there was the legend continues. Now, on legend, I knew all the songs already because they, would, they were overplayed. You know, in Trinidad especially, they played those songs on legend like over and over and over. So... I went for something I didn't know. So I picked Survival and I picked Confrontation. And then I didn't remember those albums again until I went back to Trinidad. And about two weeks after, I, remember, I, I took them out of the suitcase and I remember, I was like, oh, damn. And I looked at the back of both of them and Confrontation had Buffalo Soldier on it. So I thought I'd listen to Survival first. And when I popped Survival in, it just blew my mind. The first song was So Much Trouble in the World. So it was the first time I'm hearing about the world in music, you know, um, like really a global outlook on the world in music. And then the second track was Zimbabwe. And the first line of Zimbabwe is, 
every man got a right to decide his own destiny. And that just switched something in my head. And from that moment on, I looked at music with a message. I always looked at music with a message after that. So that's why that album is key for me, because it really switched me on to the message that, that I still try to put in my music today, you know? It's like the continuous theme with me. It, from that album on, I was so deeply entrenched into how I, you know, it, it really guided the way I thought about music in a big way. And even the way I looked at Trinidadian artists. So, like, after that, the artists I would li really listen to in Trinidad were, like, Resistance, um, Shadow, because Shadow was creative with his lyrics, very creative. And he could talk about issues without talking about them. Whereas Stalin, on the other hand, was direct. So it's like you were getting, you know, it, it, that actually opened me up to listening, to listening to lyrics a lot more than just going along with the music. Because sometimes we could get carried away with the beat and it's real shit we're listening to, you know? That's just my <laughs> <opinion>. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, man. Mm. I think I think my favorite from this album is One Drop. Yeah, big tune, big tune. I think for me it's still Zimbabwe because every time I hear that first time I get the goosebumps on the back of my neck. Mm -hmm. Every time. And and you know you know the thing with Mali on that uh, on that well um in most of his work is that he was like he was trying to be as direct as possible with that album, you know. Because he had Kaya, yeah, yeah, but he yeah. thought Kaya was too lovey-dovey and too, like, yeah, yeah. too ganja, and, you know what I mean? And he was just like, yeah. right, cool. you think, you think, it, he, he, and he said it in an interview, you know, you think I'm soft, but I come hard with this one. Come too yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, he wanted to, yeah. to, to, to like, sing, like, sing, Africa, sing about, sing about what was happening in Africa and point the whole world right. to, 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 to what was Time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, the, the lyrics, and you said as well, it's just very direct. It's just very direct. There's no way you can escape the message in any of those songs from Wake Up and Live to Africa Unite. It's as clear as day. Mm. And, it, you know, it really needed to be at that time because. I suppose Africa was still going through its independence movement. Not everyone was independent. I mean, he actually played for Zimbabwe's independence in yeah. 80, I believe, right? Yeah. So, so during that time, you know, Africa was, there was a lot of upheaval. People think there's upheaval now in Africa. Actually, back then it was probably worse. Um, but um, I think... I think that album, without trying to sound too cliche, it has withstood the test of time because it still resonates today. It still resonates today like, as though it wasn't just for its time, but it was for all time. Because um, even though some of the subject matter was directly aimed at Africa and Africans, it kind of like for example wake up and live life is one big road with lots of signs come on i mean that's what's happening in america right now you know and that's that is having a domino effect in every other country where black people are a minority you know what i'm saying because they're not willing to sit down and take shit anymore yeah but they, you know what i'm saying and those songs still resonate today they still have power today um yeah. On that note, I don't want this to run out of time. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, I mean, this was one of them nice introspective conversations that could have gone for hours and hours and hours and hours. And we should really be having it with two drink and two smoke <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. But yeah, COVID dictates are different at different pace this, this time around. So yeah. what do you have coming up? Tell the people what you have coming up and then and then we can say goodbye. Well, the EP's out, as everyone knows. 
know, it's on Bandcamp, it's on Spotify, Amazon, all those, you know, music outlets online. Um, I'm producing, the keyboard player in my band is dropping a, uh, an instrumental EP in the next few weeks, and I'm producing that. So that's going to be, it's going to be really good. I am also, I've been writing an album since last year, and it's, it's done, I've had collaborations from a few different people, um, not vocalists, but mainly instrumentalists, and hopefully I want to drop, I wanted to drop it this year, but I, I now have plans to do another EP for later this year, and I'll probably drop the album in the start of next year. Nice. So, yeah. And besides that, I'm just trying to get all the old John Blood stuff up onto all the music, online music stuff. So um, I think these times, which was done with the highlies, is on Spotify now and some other outlets, and others will be up there soon. Cool. cool. Yeah. Um, John, man, thank you for hanging out, buddy. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. Blessing. Thank, That's thank you very much for having me. Very, very, very. It was, yeah, it was a nice experience. And thanks for taking me back to survival in, in, in the best possible way. You know what I mean? I love that album. Yeah, man. Great album. I wish more people could hear it because it's, it's really something, I think. And right. from, 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 from me, Mango Seed. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. Go on, go on. Sorry, I was Rich. just going to say, from me, thank you for writing that EP. The, the, those songs are so like on point and relevant and just great to listen to. So thanks. Um, thank you very much, man. Thank you very, very, very much. From Mango Seed, thank you all very much for, for, for tuning in to Selectors. We will catch you all on the next one. Thanks, John Blood. Big up everybody, every time. Stay safe, wash your hands. We love you. Okay, see you, John. Rich and Nico in the morning. Like, share, and subscribe uh, to all our videos. Um, and if <laughs> buy our shit and stuff, <laughs> he's gonna keep laughing. <laughs> but seriously, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. Come again next week, Tuesday. Peace.